finally got my hands on the 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro. So I've been, able, I've been waiting for this for quite some time. This is the Maxon model, 6 cores, i9, uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM, the Radeon Pro 560 X GPU. The only thing that I haven't maxed out in this is the storage, so mine's the 1 terabyte model. So it's slightly more affordable than the 4 terabyte one, but it's still crazy expensive. This one costs uh, 3,700 pounds or $4,800. So yeah, this thing is a crazy expensive machine. So the question is, is it really worth it? Now, Dave 2D did a video about a week ago discussing how this MacBook with the i9 processor gets so hot that it cannot even run at the base clock speeds that Apple advertises. And after that, a lot of other tech reviewers did their own tests, and basically they found the exact same thing, that in some cases, this machine, this crazy expensive i9 MacBook Pro was slower than last year's model. So that's that's crazy when you think about it. So in the end, Apple has released a software update to fix all the thermal throttling issues, and I was honestly quite skeptical of this. I mean, how can a software fix fix something that's caused by the hardware, the thin chassis in the first place? Well, this is what the video this video is for. So here's my in-depth tests for the thermal throttling issue. Um, here's everything you need to know about the 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro i9. Uh, before and also after Apple's update and software fix, and also how it compares to the 2017 15-inch model with a 2.9 GHz Kaby Lake i7 quad-core processor. So yeah, this is going to be a pretty interesting video. Get the popcorn ready, and let's have a look. Okay, so I'm going to start with a test before Apple software fix. Okay, so starting off with Geekbench 4, in terms of throttling, you can see how the 2018 i9 model spikes a lot. So 1.3 gear, it seems to be the lowest clock that I've seen, and it goes to and stays at about 2.0 to 2.3 gear most of the times. But Geekbench is quite of a different uh, benchmarking tool, as in it does a large number of uh, simple, smaller tests that don't usually stress the CPU to its max, which is, you know, what you can see from the usage tab here. On the 2017 model, the CPU clock goes much higher while the temperatures remain lower. Now, when it comes to the actual scores, the difference was actually very significant. So I've done all these tests, by the way, that you've seen and that you're going to see in this video three times. And then I took the average for all of them. And the 2017 MacBook Pro got 4,513 for a single core score and 15,000 352 for the multi-core as the average, while the 2018 i9 got 5,575 as the single core, which is over 1,000 points higher. Uh, this is massive. And then the multi-core was 23,449, so 8,000 points higher. Wow. Okay, now let's try something else. So next up, I launched uh, Cinebench. And this is a very, very different test compared to Geekbench because it uses the CPU to its full potential until it finishes rendering this image. And here on the 2018 model, you can see how the CPU gets to 100 degrees Celsius, which is crazy, and drops the frequency to as low as 0.8 gigahertz, which is a joke. I mean, this thing should go up to 4.8 with turbo. Uh, so massive thermal throttling in this case. And the fans, by the way, they barely even kicked in. Now, the 2017 model was a completely different story. The CPU clock stays at about 3.2 GHz at all times, and this is from the baseline 2.9, even when the temperatures reach 99 degrees. So a very big difference when it comes to throttling between the two, the 2018 and the 2017 model. Keep in mind that the 2018 even got down to as low as 0.8 GHz. But in the end, the 2017 i7 MacBook Pro got a CPU score of 702 as the average between uh, the three tests, while the 2018 i9 got an average of 913, which is actually significant higher in Cinebench than the 2017 model. So the 2018 is indeed faster, just not as fast as it should be. But okay, enough, enough with the benchmarks. Let's take a look at some real world tests. So I'm going to start off with Adobe Premiere. And here I have a 10 minute 4K project uh, with the same clip stacked as four picture in picture clips. So this is essentially five 4K clips on top of one another. This is, by the way, extremely demanding for both systems. And in terms of the actual thermals, the 2018 did throttle, of course, but not as much as I expected. So the lowest clock that I've seen was around 2 gigahertz, but for most of the time it stayed at about 3 to 3.5. Uh, but yeah, take a look at these spikes. So uh, these spikes shouldn't be this drastic. So yeah, it hiccuped a lot, uh, which, which shouldn't have happened. Now on the 2017 model, we got a fairly stable 3.4 gigahertz clock. Now it did go under uh, 3 gigahertz a few times, but temperatures were actually lower at around 93 to 95 uh, degrees Celsius compared to close to 100 degrees on the 2018 model. So the 2017 is also throttling here, but not as much as the 2018 one. Okay, but what about the actual export times? Well, here's where it gets really interesting. So the 2018 i9 MacBook Pro exported this project in 42 minutes and 8 seconds. The 2017 MacBook Pro with the i7 processor exported this in 36 minutes and 41 seconds, so almost 6 minutes faster than in 2018. 
What? So this is quite similar to Dave 2D's results. And trust me, I'll explain everything why this happened by the end of this video. But right now, before Apple's update, Premiere on the 2018 i9 MacBook Pro is slower than on the 2017 model. Next up, I did the exact same project, but in Final Cut Pro 10. So the same 10 minute clip with the same clip four more times on top of it. And unsurprisingly, the thermals in Final Cut Pro were a night and day difference. So not only did the 2018 model maintain a significantly more stable clock, but the temperatures were much, much lower than before in Premiere. And in terms of the actual export time, this is, guys, why you shouldn't use Premiere on a Mac. Honestly, Final Cut Pro finished the same project in 13 minutes and 20 seconds on the i9-2018 MacBook Pro, which is actually 3.23 times faster than Adobe Premiere. So, same exact settings, even the same bitrate, by the way, and Final Cut Pro was more than three times faster which is crazy. And then the 2017 model finished in 14 minutes and 55 seconds, so 1 minute and 30 seconds slower than the 2018 model, which is actually a really good improvement, especially if you consider this over an even longer project. Okay, so what about a test that's even more real than my previous real-world test? So here I have my do not buy the Apple eGPU video on the timeline. Uh, in case you've missed the video, do check it out. It's, uh, it's my full in-depth review of the Apple Blackmagic eGPU for the MacBook Pros link in bio. But yeah, this is the actual video. This is the actual project, the timeline. It's a 15 minute long video. It's not extremely complex, uh, but it's a 4K 30, uh, 30 frames per second timeline, 2997 actually with titles, motion graphics, music, color correction, and lots of device shots, which were all shot in 4K 60, by the way. So I've deleted all the render files and I've exported this as a master file in H.264 straight from Final Cut, pretty much like most of you would be doing. Now the thermals were quite similar to how they were before. In terms of the actual results, well, well, the i9 2018 MacBook Pro exported this in 11 minutes and 6 seconds, which is insane. So if you have a 15 minute video and you exported this in 15 minutes, that's basically the dream because it's one to one. But if you can do it in less than that, well, even better. And the 2017 i7 MacBook Pro exported this in 12 minutes and 50, uh, 50 seconds. So still faster than one to one and less than two minutes slower than the 2018 MacBook Pro. Next up, I wanted to do something quite interesting. So I'm going to export my project, but this time in H.265 or HEVC. So for this, I'm actually using compressor. I've adjusted the settings to what YouTube recommends. And H.265 hardware encoding is something new, by the way. So Intel added QuickSync support uh, for Skylake processors for H.265. So the 2018 MacBook Pro was actually the first MacBook to support hardware encoding for H.265 video. Uh, but the 2017 and the 2018 MacBooks with Kaby Lake and especially Coffee Lake processors, they got some, some uh, significant improvements in terms of H.265 hardware encoding, especially when it comes to 10-bit encoding. Uh, so yeah, here's where the biggest improvement will actually be seen. So the i9 2018 MacBook Pro finished exporting this project in H.265 in just 12 minutes and 43 seconds, so a bit slower than before, but then the 2017 MacBook Pro finished in 23 minutes and 14 seconds, so almost double the amount of time of the 2018 model. So yeah, if you're doing a lot of H.265 exports, keep in mind that all modern smartphones actually record in H.265 now or HEVC. Uh, my GH5, by the way, does this as well, especially if you shoot in 10 bit, by the way. Uh, yeah, if this is the case, then the 2018 MacBook Pro would be twice as fast as the 2017 model, which is a huge, huge improvement. So a one hour project would take 30 minutes on the 2018 models which is huge. And finally, I want to do something that I haven't seen anyone test, and that's actual 3D modeling and rendering. So this is where your CPU would be used at 100% for a significant amount of time. So, I mean, the, the concepts that you've seen on the channel, those literally take days, some even weeks to render, and that's 24-7 rendering, by the way, fun fact behind the scenes. So yeah, here I have a 3D scene uh, similar to the concepts that you've seen in my previous videos. Now, these are just some Xenoftec logos for now, made out of metal, glass, and I'm going to render this in 4K. This is a single frame, by the way, not a video. And in terms of the thermals, they weren't, yeah, they weren't great. So the 2018 had a ton of spikes. The clock stayed at about 2.2 to 2.3 gigahertz, which is significantly below the advertised base clock of 2.9, not even to mention the 4.8 gigahertz clock. Uh, so yeah, this machine should be achieving that according to Apple with Turbo Boost, but it's not even achieving the base clock speed, which is crazy. But now, if you take a look at a 2017 MacBook Pro, this is a completely different story. So not only are the temperatures slightly lower, but take a look at the actual frequency graph. So uh, this is almost a line versus the spikes that we got with a 2018 model. However, when it comes to the actual rendering times, 
well, the 2019, 2018, wish it was 2019, uh, the 2018 i9 MacBook Pro took only 13 minutes to render this, while on the i7 2017, it took 16 minutes. Now, this might not seem like a huge difference, but this was actually 18.75% faster on the 2018 model, which would actually save you a few days if you're rendering a large project. Which is, which is huge. So all this was before Apple's update. So yesterday or two days ago, or I don't know, depending on when you're watching this video, but Apple has released a fix for all the throttling issues. So there was actually a digital key that was missing from the voltage regular controller, basically. So essentially MacBook Pro, the MacBook Pro was basically drawing more power than it needed. And therefore the temperatures were you know higher and the CPU throttled more than it should. So I've done all these tests again, and here are the results after Apple's fix. Okay, so in Geekbench 4, this time the 2018 MacBook Pro got a single core score of 5,514 and a multi-core of 22,289, both of which were surprisingly lower than before. And again, this is not just a single core, this is the average of three scores, uh, so that's, that's quite interesting. So what about Cinebench? Well, in Cinebench, this is where we actually we can actually see some pretty significant differences. So in terms of the actual temperatures, there is a massive difference compared to before. We get what's pretty much a straight line in terms of the CPU frequency, which now averages at about 3.1 gigahertz. I'm not seeing any any drops to 0.8 gigahertz or anything crazy like that, uh, like before. In terms of the actual scores, we got an average score of 998 versus 913, uh, which is what we got before, and that's actually a big difference, a significant difference in Cinebench. So yeah, in terms of Cinebench, the update did make a difference. Okay, but what about the elephant in the room, Adobe Premiere? Well, this one took 42 minutes before the update, and the CPU basically thermal throttled like crazy. Well, after the update, the temperature stayed at around 95 degrees, the CPU usage was still very low at less than 15%, but then take a look at the clock speed. So it's now staying at about 3.4 to 3.5 GHz, with no drastic spikes as we had before. And then when it comes to the actual results, wow. I was, I was quite impressed. So the 2018 MacBook Pro after the update finished in 34 minutes and 56 seconds, which is actually 7 minutes faster than before the update, which is huge, and even faster than the 2017 model, which, you know, it should have been like this in the first place. But then Premiere is not optimized for this machine. You know, the CPU was at just 12% usage and the GPU was barely used. So what about Final Cut Pro 10? Well, during the same 10 minute 4K picture in picture project again, after the update, it exported in 13 minutes and 13 seconds versus 13 minutes and 20 seconds so seven seconds faster not a huge difference but there still is one but when it comes to the actual temperatures yeah i haven't noticed any big difference compared to what we had before so they stayed at around nine degrees on average and the clock was a bit more consistent at about 2.7 gigahertz compared to what we had before so it wasn't that big of a difference in final cut pro 10. moving on to the egpu video export test in h.264 this one exported in 10 minutes and 58 seconds after the update versus 11 minutes and six seconds before the update so eight seconds faster Again, not a big difference, but there still is one. Moving on to the compressor H.265 export. After the update, the MacBook Pro finished in 12 minutes and 43 seconds, which was literally the same as before the update. So yeah, no improvements here. Okay, so now let's do the test that I'm mostly looking forward to, and that is 3D rendering. So here I have the same project with the Zonotech logos uh, as before, and let's take a look at the temperatures and the throttling first. So before the update, this was a complete mess. Uh, the 2018 MacBook Pro had a lot of spikes. The clock was staying at around 2.2 to 3.2 to 2.3 gigahertz, while the 2017 model had an almost straight line in terms of the clock speed and also lower temperatures. But after the update, Wow, take a look at this. So the temperatures averaged at around 96 degrees Celsius. They never actually reached 100. And the clock itself was staying at about 3.1 gigahertz while the spikes were pretty much gone entirely. So yeah, the update had a massive impact in a good way, uh, especially when you're maxing out the CPU, when you're stressing the CPU to its full. So what about the actual results? Well, before the update, the MacBook Pro finished in uh, 13 minutes, the 2018, while the 2017 finished in 16 minutes. But after the update, it finished in 10 minutes and 53 seconds. And th this is huge. This is a 32% improvement over, uh, over the 2017 model. So essentially, if you render a project that would normally take, I don't know, seven days to complete, which is basically the case when it comes to, you know, rendering concepts, the concepts that you've seen in, in the previous videos, uh, this MacBook Pro would only take about four days and 18 hours compared to seven days, which is which is huge. Okay, so having said all this, having done all these tests, here's my conclusion. So all Macs, honestly, thermal throttle. It's not the only it's not only the 2018 model that does, all of them really thermal throttle. The only Mac that does achieve the advertised clock speeds, the thermal ones uh, under full load, would be the Mac Pro. And that's literally the only one. Even the iMac Pro throttles. So yeah, the update that Apple released, they 
that one actually did improve the performance by a fairly significant amount. The temperatures were lower, the clock was more consistent, but does it reach the 4.8 gigahertz with turbo that Apple says on their page and even Intel? No, it does not. But here's the thing, the same applies to every single laptop with an i9 processor out there. The ones that reach 4.5 gigahertz, for example, are the ones that are insanely thick and they're really heavy and you might just, you know, call them desktops because they're not that portable. Uh, the 2018 MacBook Pro is in fact a significant improvement overall over the 2017 model, but can you get better performance from a Windows machine with an i9 processor? I mean, yeah, definitely. It depends on the program that you use. If you use a Mac, you should be only using software that takes full advantage of the hardware, and that is Final Cut Pro, Affinity Photo, and so on. And in these cases, the 2018 MacBook significantly outperforms any of the competition. Even a Windows machine with the same i9 processor, again, if you're using software that takes full advantage of the hardware, such as Final Cut Pro 10. But if you use Adobe software that has not been optimized for macOS, well, in that case, you're better off buying a Windows equivalent. But yeah, let me know in the comments what do you guys think about all this, all those issues, and if you think they're actually fixed at the moment. I honestly think they kind of are. The performance improvements over the 2017 model are pretty huge. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think about all this, especially about the price of the new MacBook. Again, you don't need to buy the 4TB model, that's crazy expensive, but 1TB, even 512 is more than enough for most people. But yeah, let me know in the comments what are your thoughts on all this. Definitely subscribe and enable notifications if you want to see more in-depth reviews like this one. This was not an easy video to make, um, but yeah, I really wanted to cover every detail that I could, so hopefully this clears things up with the 2018 MacBook Pro. Thanks for watching, and huge thanks to Dave2D, and Jonathan Morrison for doing basically the initial tests in the first place. Apple has seen those videos, they work with them, and this is why we actually got this update today, which is which is awesome. So Apple is definitely listening and watching tech reviews and tests on YouTube, um, which is awesome. So yeah, thank you for watching. Um, yeah, definitely give this video a like if you enjoyed it to let me know. I'm Daniel, let me know in the comments if you made it to the end, but this was pretty much it. Stay tuned for more cool videos, I have some pretty interesting ones coming the next few days. But yeah, thanks for watching, I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Zodok Tech, signing out. Cheers.